Welcome to More Joy, The Laughter Show. My name is Monet and I'm the host. And I'm here today with Rick Hansen, the author of The Buddha's Brain, The Practical Neuroscience of Happiness, Love, and Wisdom. And we're going to talk to Rick today about the brain and happiness and laughter. So thank you so much for being with us today. I'm really My excited to talk to you. I love your... Um, your way of simplifying complex information and making it so accessible and um, entertaining as well. So, Great. Thank you. So I'd like to talk to you today about the brain and the benefits of therapeutic laughter. Um, one of the interesting health benefits is that laughter itself dilates uh, you know the you know, cardiovascular vessels, exactly. so they can flow with more um, blood and reduce the risk of heart disease. And reduces blood pressure. Yeah, exactly. And then the other thing, of course, is that laughter pops is, is fantastic stress relief. So it triggers that kind of stress relief, it, um, which is fantastic, which then creates all kinds of cascades of mental and physical health benefits. What kind of cascades? Well. Gosh, anytime you get a stress relief benefit, you're helping your immune system, mm -hmm. you're helping your gastrointestinal system, your cardiovascular, you know, heart, etc. system, your nervous mm -hmm. system, and your endocrine system. Um, we evolved to handle bursts of stress, but we did not evolve to handle chronic mid-range stress, which right. is kind of the, the lot of most people today, certainly in the, in the West. Um, the Western countries is what I mean to right. say. And so the effects of that are really bad for mental and physical health, especially over the long haul. I've heard that we were like biologically programmed to have this stress response so that if there was a tiger ready to eat us, we could either run away or fight the tiger and kill it, and then the stress would go away. But a lot of the things that we react to today, they're not life-threatening. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they're more chronic and ongoing, so it's not a quick burst of fight or flight, it's this ongoing stress that has a whole different effect on us. That's right. Uh, in my book, I, I talk a lot about how threat reactive we are. And we, therefore, walk around a lot thinking that life is at threat level orange. Even though, honestly, most of life is green with a little drop of yellow. It's kind of like threat level pale chartreuse, right? You know I mean? That's the yeah. real nature yeah. of things. Um, and so we take that biological nature that sees threats everywhere and tends to get anxious because that's a great way to keep um, creatures alive in the wild. Um, our ancestors that were mellow and endlessly optimistic didn't pass on their genes, but the ones that were nervous and cranky survived and left us at the top of the food chain today. Right. So, so we, we still have, have those nervous and we cranky have those, genes. Yeah, we have those vestiges. And that's why, again, I think um, seeing the good news mm -hmm. uh, and also waking up from this paranoid trance is kind of quiet walking nightmare that most of us are caught into, mm -hmm. caught in, and see instead the good news. Yes, indeed, there are real tigers out there. We've got to really, really deal with them. But for every real tiger that's out there, we're kind of caught up in fear of a hundred paper tigers. Mm -hmm. And so in my book, I talk about how to see through the paranoid trance and how to take in good experiences increasingly to help us wake up from that and build internal resources that are woven into the fabric of the brain and the nervous system. One of the results of which is more laughter. You know like when you're afraid of something you think's going to happen and it right. doesn't happen? Yeah. You like laugh with relief. Yeah. I think we should all laugh a lot more in, right. recognize, in recognition of the number of paper tigers that we've been alarmed by. I've heard you say something like our brains are wired to be Velcro to bad experiences and Teflon to good experiences. Can you say more about that and how we can transform our lives just recognizing that and responding to that idea? Thank you. Yeah, I think that's one of the most important um, findings really from neuropsychology that looks at evolution. Mm -hmm. That we, the brain to help us survive, uh, you know, is biased toward the negative. In other words, Mother Nature is tilted toward producing gene copies, but in effect she's tilted against quality of life. And so for me, one of the great challenges today is to take charge of the caveman brain now that we're in the 21st century, mm -hmm. both for our personal quality of life and well-being, which includes, of course, loving relationships with others, but also because when you've got caveman brains armed with nuclear weapons, <laughs> very quick to make these distinctions between us and them that have an almost tribal quality to them, which then leads us in our nature as well to tend to dehumanize them right. and just feel that they're a threat and we better attack them first, et cetera, et cetera. If we don't take charge 
this caveman brains in the 21st century, we're going to be in trouble. That's why I think the opportunity is so great with the meeting of modern neuroscience, as well as these ancient contemplative wisdom traditions, to give people a kind of operating manual and toolbox whereby they can actually take charge of that brain. Yeah. And one way to do that is to recognize that, yep, it is like Velcro for the negative and tough one for the positive. Mm -hmm. So to me, the point of all that is a takeaway, because no one's going to do it for us. we got to do it for ourselves inside our own heads. So what can we do? Yeah, what we can do is, A, see through the paper tigers, mm -hmm. wake up from the paranoid trance, and see, the, see the real threats for sure and deal with them, but mm -hmm. also see the ways in which we're kind of quietly anxious, much more than usually we really, really need to be. Mm -hmm. In other words, most of us truly, legitimately, deserve to feel safer moment to moment and stronger and more able and more optimistic than we tend to naturally feel. Mm -hmm. this, and the second thing is to really take in the good. You know, that's something that I really just think is so important and really kind of developed how to do that neurologically, mm -hmm. to use the mechanisms of memory and kind of trick them by savoring a positive experience right. for 15, 20, 30 seconds in a row. The famous saying, saying in brain science from the psychologist uh, Donald Hebb is neurons that fire together wire together. What does that mean? It means that uh, fleeting mental activity sculpts neural structure. That means that how you use your thoughts, your feelings, your attention, your mindfulness, and what you do with what's in the field of awareness has a major impact over time in terms of neural structure, for better or worse. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you dwell on resentments or paper tigers or sin feelings of inadequacy or lashing yourself with self-criticism, yep, alas, those neurons are firing, therefore they're wiring away, building out internal structures that lead to feelings of depression, pessimism, anxiety, uh, inhibition about aiming high in life and so forth. Instead of being carried away yes. by the Velcro for the negative, yes. the, the, the great thing is to use the machinery of memory to flip that so that instead yes. you make your own brain over time like Velcro for the positive. Yes. And that's why if you dwell on positive experiences, which are mostly mild, but it's easy to get a half a dozen or more a day of little moments. So this is a really nice right. time right now. Yes. This is a nice little moment to take this in. So when a person goes through life and they see good facts out there, like in the book I talk about three steps of taking in the good, let good facts be good experiences, two, really, really savor it for 15, 30 seconds straight. Get those neurons firing together so they start wiring together positively. So you're gradually weaving those resources into the fabric of your brain and yourself. And then sense and intent, third step, that this positive experience is sticking to your ribs. Yeah. It's sinking in, it's going in, like a luscious golden syrup sinking down into old places that have been sad or wounded or neglected inside, and gradually healing yourself, you know, one brick at a time, filling a hole in your heart. Right. Right? And that's a fantastic method that people can use in daily life, in the middle of everything, commuting, dealing with kids, dealing with you know, family and so forth. Um, to gradually, literally rewire their own brain from the inside out. It's really important to be aware of where our attention is resting. Because attention itself is like a combination spotlight and vacuum cleaner. You know, it illuminates what it rests upon and then sucks it into the brain. Because the neurons that are firing in the focal field of attention are really turbocharged in terms of building neural structure. Those neurons that are outside the field of awareness are also firing and wiring away, but they don't do it with the same intensity as what's under the field of focal attention, what's under the spotlight, because that's how organisms learn, based on what's in the field of conscious awareness. That's how they particularly learn, right? And so, to me, get control of the spotlight. Don't just keep resting it on you know, bad news past the point that's productive and useful, and instead shift it over to positive factors and then go to work on what's in the field of attention in a way that will gradually help, you know, use your mind to change your brain to change your mind, right? Use your mind to change your brain to change your mind for, <laughs> for the better. That's right. what you're doing in right. a targeted way. You're intervening through mental activity alone inside the black box to make um, the black, to change the black box, to change the neural right. substrate of the mental states that we really, really care about. And that makes me laugh. That makes me laugh with joy that <laughs> we have that kind of power at a time when so many of us feel bounced around by all these massive social forces, Al-Qaeda, you know, recessions, the economy, healthcare, whatever, uh, and our reactions to it. To feel increasingly that you can move out of the passenger seat where you're bouncing down the highway right. to the driver's seat, get your hand on the wheel, guiding your own brain in its own evolution, 
I mean, that just, that makes me really happy. <laughs>